Again, the question is passage of Senate Bill 248. Senator of the Fourth. Thank you, Madam President. Madam President and members. Well, first I need to take us back a little bit so that we can remember uh, kind of how we got where we are. So let me first say that the current, the, the current law is that a person who is arrested or otherwise detained or taken into custody, I want you to remember that part, or taken into custody, who is not arrested for a felony or certain misdemeanors and who is not reasonably suspected of concealing a weapon or concealing evidence may be strip searched if the person will be detained with one or more others and if that person is to be incarcerated for at least 12 hours. Now, the piece that I've got to take you back to is in 2013, we expanded strip search legislation in Act 317. We, when we did it, the compromise, so to say, of changing it so that we were no longer just dealing with certain felonies, but to expand it to include misdemeanors and other incidents, we put a 12-hour window there so that individuals would not be adversely affected by allowing individuals to ultimately be able to bail out, do whatever they need to in order to not be subjected to their liberties being infringed upon, so to say, um, by going through the process. Now, it's ironic, ironic because now here we come back later after an agreement, and now we have a piece of legislation where the National Association of Social Workers disagrees, ACLU disagrees, individuals surely from communities that have been adversely affected from a disparate effect on treatment or regarding treatment related to strip searches have testified and spoke to the issue. And instead, what we have now is that we've come before us to now get rid of the 12-hour rule. And it said, well, because individuals, law enforcement is unable to maintain, and it's been said for public safety purposes, to maintain separate space for individuals so that we can at least allow individuals' liberties to not be infringed upon, especially since we have opened up the floodgates of the type of cases, now basically almost any type, including municipal matters, could put you in a position to be searched. So that brings us to where we are today, that the compromise has now the rug has been snatched up from under the efforts that was pre previously made. Now, I'm just realizing that I don't have the four amendments that were done in the committee, and so we're going to need to work on those four amendments, team, that were done in committee because they need to be presented today also on the floor. Because one of the challenges as we take this trip down memory lane is it really feels like not only have we expanded strip search, the tool of strip search being used by law enforcement, we're doing it again without looking through the lens of the communities that are mostly affected and the disparate effects that exist for us in our state. Well, what do you mean by that, Senator? Well, I'm not certain if you're aware, but there has been a horrific case of strip, strip search misuse, illegal strip searches that have been done by your friends more than mine, even though they're from my city, but always with you on the outer ring, more than ever with anyone else, MPA. Members of MPA have 
not raped one, but multiple individuals, and consistently did it. And the problem is, is our justice system, not only in Wisconsin, but especially, has many pieces of corruption that have denied fairness and justice to people in the state of Wisconsin, especially individuals who look like me. It has not been done once, but multiple reports that have told us, whether it's sentencing reports, whether it's reports from others, that our system is plagued with what ultimately boils down to racial bias and racial disparities that exist in our state. And you might say, well, this is really about the safety of law enforcement. And I would argue that you're so far from the reality of what is existing in our state. And that the lens upon which you see through, that I can't give it to you. I'm born with it. I get to see it every day. I'm going to tell you that your legislation and the efforts of what we've done with strip search is such that a little boy named Isaiah Taylor, who before Christmas was going to deliver a turkey to a neighbor, he was stopped because he was a black boy running. He was seen as a criminal, not as a respectable young man. You might say, well, Lena, it's because there's so much crime in Milwaukee. I would argue that cow manure is what that statement would be to me. Why? Because one, I asked for the stats to show me that there was something in particular in that area at that time. I said, tell me the description of the particular individual that Isaiah Taylor fit. But even if I give you that, when you patted him down and he had nothing, what was the reason to go further? When you patted him down and took his property, and it was a turkey and a frozen one at that, what was the reason to go further? Because if in your mind you have no value, or you have a bias to when you see a little black boy running down the street, then the question is, is he ever a respectable young man in your eyes? No matter if you asked him to stop and he stopped, that he put up his hands so you could search him, that he let you take his property and throw it to the ground and never return it to him. Regardless of any of that, he never met a respectable young man. And you might say, well, this bores me. <sighs> I'm not really concerned. Well, I know. Just like there was heroin addiction happening in the city of Milwaukee for years and we did nothing but through another lens, we can understand. It's a lens you can understand a little better because maybe you're a little closer to that person. I don't know, maybe you like me, maybe you don't, I don't know, but my son is no different than your son or your grandchild. He's just brown. He's mine. He's respectable but was never treated that way. Why does it matter, Lena? Because this bill and what we've done since 2013 would allow him to be in the situation to be strip searched. He doesn't deserve to have to be in that situation. And you might say, well, Lena, it's not related. Oh, yes, it is. It's a lens that you may choose not to see through, but it's a lens of reality. I praise God that he sent me to stand on this floor, to tell each of you who may not want to hear it, who might not like it, what the reality and the truth is in this place called Wisconsin that is the place that's number one in the nation for incarceration of black men. It's not because we're likely to be more criminals. It's because the system is biased. Whether you accept the truth or not, I'm here to tell it to you. Isaiah did nothing but go on a day, ironically, when MPD was giving away food and turkeys to do the same thing they were doing. It was a little boy in Warsaw who did the same thing, but the police went and helped him. If 
if it was your child or your grandchild, you would not have accepted that they put him in the car and they closed the door and locked him in. He was not free to go. Was he a threat? My 16-year-old, who doesn't even look 16, looks more like he's 12 or 14, who surely has his father's spirit, not as much his mother's, because I'm not exactly certain if I was in the car and I was him and I had the fiery spirit I have, what, how it would have went. But glory be to God that he listens to his mother, obeys his mother, and has his father's spirit, but it doesn't make it right that he was locked in the car. See, you're suggesting that law enforcement needs the tools, and I'm saying they have the tools, and tools are being misused, and don't close your eyes to a $5 million settlement, which was really too small for 74 people who were raped by MPD. I'm saying don't close your eyes to it. You're giving them additional tools. So I said at least in, in areas of our state that have the ability to do the 12 hour rule, let them so that people at least have a window to be able to deal with what is fair and what is right. No, wouldn't do it. So fine, don't do the state do Milwaukee County, because we know that there is abuse there. You know, you went and changed the whole freaking John Doe legislation because you felt like it was some misuse. We know it's misuse with strip searches, and you expanded. I think it's ironic. I'm not going to begin to say what conversations happened in the background for this legislation to get here at a time that MPD got sued and so that with this legislation that maybe it will make it harder for people to sue in the, free, in the future. Not gonna even go there. The Fourth Amendment says that the right of a person to be secure in their person, house, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated and no warrants shall issue but upon probable cause supported by an oath or an affirmation and particularly described being the place to be searched and the persons and the things to be seized. Ladies and gentlemen, let me be clear, that's the Fourth Amendment. The realities that exist in a place that is number one in the nation for segregation and incarceration of African American men, all of you are as responsible. You're willing to go in and change legislation about any other thing that you feel like you want to in Milwaukee, except for the stuff that is the real crisis and protection of life. No concern. There is no black man on this floor. Spencer Coggs was the last. Monroe Swan was the first. I speak for them today. I speak for them that in this state, the bias that black men get on the front lines, on the criminalization of thought that is provided that when a black boy runs, he must be doing something wrong. That is the mindset. That is the reality of racism that exists in our community and in our state. Yes, I said it because it is what is true. When will we see ourselves? When will I get colleagues that are in this on both sides of the aisle, that are of both genders, that will speak for the truth without me saying it? I'm not some angry black woman saying something that's not true. I'm speaking truth to power and I know it's uncomfortable. 
Whether you realize it or not, unintended consequences of your legislation leads to what creates the disparities. I know, I know it's not easy to see it from a different lens and to see it in moccasins that you don't have to walk. When Isaiah came home, I was overwhelmed because he had asked me to take the turkey to the neighbor's house. And we debated over whether or not I should put it in a bag or not. And you know, he's 16 and you know, he wanted to do it his way and he was like, don't put it in a bag. I was like, no honey, the handle was broke so I put it in a bag. I feel like maybe if they, it wasn't in the bag, maybe if they could see it was a turkey, you know, maybe they wouldn't have ever even stopped him. But they stopped him and they saw it was a turkey. Your legislation gives freedom for tools to be used that are presently abused. I want to believe wholeheartedly that you don't mean for stuff to be abused, but it is the reality. What will you do about that? All persons born or naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States and of the state wherein they reside. No state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges and immunities of citizens of the United States, nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor deny any person within its jurisdiction the equal protections of the law. When laws are such that there is a disparate effect, that's not equal protection. You know, I appreciate that some of my colleagues on the other side of the aisle that had an opportunity to, to meet Isaiah text me and email me to say that's completely wrong what happened to Isaiah. It was inappropriate. <laughs> One of my colleagues jokingly said, Isaiah's really respectful. Much better than even you, Senator. <laughs> That's the story of not just Isaiah, but of hundreds of thousands of black boys, men who are subject to the challenges that exist that are realities in our state. The senator from the six was one of the first individuals to even comment on it and put it in, even on social media. And I know that in that moment, it was Isaiah, but it was LA. You've not met Isaiah, maybe? And maybe you even think that, oh, Senator, this is completely over the top and it's not the same. It's, it's connected. And if I've not done a good job of helping you to see how to connect the dots, maybe you can hear it from the words of the Isaiahs. Maybe you'll go and see. I'm willing to put you in a room so you can understand but there's one thing for me to tell you, but there's another thing for there to be a will, a will to understand, a will to figure out the lens that you can't see it through. No matter who we are, we should not want to be the worst in every freaking thing for black people in the nation. We don't have to be. 
But when we do policies that have consequences and collateral effects that in turn create disparate effects among certain populations, we should check ourselves and the policies that we're doing. And in this moment, no matter how great, no matter what good intentions we have, the policy that we have on the floor today is a policy that is reflective of a procedure and a tool that has been used in the city of Milwaukee that has been, abus been abusive. 74 people were in the class action suit. Those are the ones who said something. Do you know how many, do you know how many people don't say anything? I went to a Martin Luther King speech and the doctor spoke about two things. One thing he spoke about that actually goes back to the Planned Parenthood bill, which is the difference between um, a pharmacist giving a prescription and what a doctor does. The difference between a pharmacist and the doctor and why the reimbursement rate should not be like you're suggesting is because a doctor, as he said, they're in the touching business. Pharmacists just, you know, they just dispense. But doctors are in the touching business. But one of the things he said also that is important in the midst of this is for us to get to a place that we respect our diversity, that we work on inclusion, and more importantly, that we see value in others. <coughs> this bill is so much more than about whether or not somebody has another room to hold somebody in. It's so much more than the progression of what has happened under your leadership to expand strip searches. It truly is about the disparate effect and whether or not this tool that's being provided, whether or not we should question whether or not this tool is needed. I'll leave you with Martin Luther King's quote. In the end, we will not remember the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. You're the friends of the people of Wisconsin. They depend on you. We don't get to vote just for our district. We, we vote. It affects us all. If you don't find it in you to determine why or what we can do differently to change the disparate effects that happen upon people of color, it'll never happen. But I promise you, as long as I'm here, I won't be silent. Questions?